Hey, welcome back. So this is 13.1. Um, We're going to look at functions of several variables, and it's pretty simple. Um, let's begin with just talking about the domain and, and the range. So the book is going to, to start with just domain. Okay. And in particular, if you're dealing with several variables, your, your domain can be ordered pairs or ordered triplets. So, um, you know, maybe I should give you an example of what a function of several variables look like, looks like. So if you have f of x, y equaling x squared plus uh, sine of uh, x, y, that, that's a multivariable function, so a function of several variables. Uh, stuff like that. Okay, so anyways, the, the domain is going to be similar to what we already learned about domain. Um, basically, you need to make sure that the LN, is, is the stuff inside the LN is greater than zero. Um, secondly, you need to make sure the stuff inside the square root is greater than or equal to zero. And then thirdly, you have to make sure that you don't accidentally divide by zero. Okay. Um, so those three elements is, is kind of what you're worried about. Um, before you see example one, there's kind of like this uh, function here, f of xy equals ln of xy. So for the domain here, to describe the domain, you would want to you want to write uh, it in set notation. So you have the set of ordered pairs, xy, this means such that, that bar means such that. Um, x times y is greater than zero. Okay, so the, I mean, you just kind of write it what it is, and uh, that that sort of gets the job done for us. Um, in in the homework, of course, they'll give you probably multiple choice. So you're not literally going to be writing this out, but yeah, you see multiple choice. Um, and this problem number five, uh, the function four x squared minus y. It's like a polynomial, but with multiple variables. Polynomials are continuous everywhere, even when you have multiple variables. So you see uh, the, the correct choice, uh, set of all points x, y, such that x is any real number, y is any real number. Um, let's look at their examples. So they give you one with three variables and one with four variables. Example one. So part A, we have f of x comma y. Um, and that equals the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 9 all over x. So there's several, two issues here, right? So first, the first issue, we need to make sure that x squared plus y squared minus 9 is um, greater than or equal to 0. And if you rewrite it a bit, x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to 9, that's a circle of radius uh, 3. And that statement basically means we want everything on the outside of it. Okay. Um, then we kind of have to couple that with the fact that the denominator cannot be zero. So we have to restrict the x values on top of the, the previous statement and say basically um, you're not allowed to use anything on the y-axis. Okay. So ultimately then the domain is a set of all, all ordered pairs x comma y such that two things are true. Basically you need x squared plus y squared to be greater than or equal to 9. And you need the fact that x cannot be 0. Okay. No nice way to really write that. You just kind of write it well, you know, as, as you would think. Um, okay, uh, let's look at part B then. Um, I mean, you could always draw the picture of it like I did here. I guess that's a, a, another way to think about it. But anyways, let's look at part B. Um, this character has, uh, it's de dependent on three variables. Um, so we have x all over the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared minus c squared. So in this case, we need that denominator um, to be, not be zero, and we need the stuff inside the root to be um, greater than or equal to zero. In other words, we need the stuff inside the root to be greater than zero. So we can we can write our um, domain then as a set of or, ordered triplets this time, x, y, z, such that, uh, and, and again, we need this thing to be greater than zero. Okay. So if you rewrote it a little bit, you'd have x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, less than 9. 
And if you think about what that object is, it's just a, a, an ellipsoid, right? A, a sphere, in, in fact. And uh, the domain is any value inside that sphere, but not, not on the, you know, the actual surface of the sphere, excluding the surface. So anyways, that's kind of, I guess, what they wrote there. Um, we're using the other notation. Uh, um, then they go on and on. Describe the graph. Okay, so, so describing these graphs, you know, usually I think in terms of traces, so you not, don't necessarily have to just look at the x, y, the y, z, and the um, x, z traces. You could, you could look at, like, when the plane x equals y equals 3 or, you know, y equals 2. For example, back in this, this case where you have the natural log of x times y, you can um, consider the plane y equals, like, like, 3 or something like that. So you would be out here on the y-axis, and then we would have our x-axis right here. Let me try to draw this real quick. And then our z-axis right here. Um, on this uh, plane here, this plane y equals maybe like 3, what I do is just plug 3 in for y into this thing and then plot the ln of uh, 3x y equals ln of 3x in, in this plane. And of course, here's the z-axis, here's my x-axis. I could kind of draw it in there like that. Um, you would note that the range in this case is all real numbers, okay? just based off that one trace over here on the plane y equals 3. Okay? So um, especially for determining ranges, I think in terms of traces, and, and if I could get like the range of the uh, z uh, coordinate on the trace, if I could figure out the range of z, um, I kind of got the range of the multivariable function. Okay. So anyways, let's, let's look at what the book has in that regards. Um, talking about graphing now here. And they have example two. They want you to figure out the domain and range. So um, they give us this thing square root of 16 minus 4x squared minus y squared. Um, as far as the domain, that's kind of easy. Uh, we, we just need the guts of that thing to be greater than or equal to zero. So it's a set, the domain is a set of all points x comma y such that, um, and I want to rewrite it so it looks nice, right? So 16 minus 4x squared minus y squared, I need that to be, um, greater than or equal to zero. So I need 4x squared plus y squared to be less than or equal to 16. And basically that's an ellipse um, with uh, the major axis on the y-axis. And then this would be out at two. Okay. And, and so the domain is all the points on that ellipse or inside the ellipse. Okay, So we'll, we'll just write it though as 4x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 16. Now, as far as the um, range goes, uh, you can, like I was saying, um, let y equal like zero, let x equal zero, and then just look at the trace and see where the trace goes. Um, another way to do it is kind of just using common math sense, right? Math uh, intuition. Um, note that thing, What's the biggest it can be? Well, 16 minus 4x squared minus y squared, you're subtracting something away from 16. So the biggest it will ever be is when x and y are equal to 0. In other words, when um, it equals 16 on the inside there. So it seems that the maximum of the range is going to be square root 16, which is 4. The minimum, because it's a square root, is going to be 0. You can't ever get a negative out of there, but you can get 0 when x is um, 2 and y is 0. So uh, just from kind of intuition, and if you need to, looking at traces, and if you super duper need to, just go to the calc plot and get a plot and kind of look at it. Right? Um, there's, there's not a real science to it at this point um, in the book. Um, it's just, it's kind of just, uh, like I said, mathematical intuition, plus thinking about traces, plus worst case scenario, you just graph it, okay? Okay, so anyways, the range is going to be um, 
all value z such that z is uh, greater than or equal to zero but less than or equal to four. Okay. Um, all right, so anyways, I think that just about does it for this part. Um, yeah, and then actually seeing what the thing is, you can always kind of replace f of x, y with a z variable and then think about it like you would think about quad, the quadric surfaces. Um, in particular, square both sides, you get 16 minus 4x squared minus y squared, and then rewrite it z squared plus 4x squared plus y squared, and then think about the traces. And of course, the traces here, they're all going to be ellip ellipses or circles. So that implies you're going to have an ellipsoid, sort of. Um, the only problem with that logic is that originally, our uh, range here, right? It's not the complete ellipsoid, it's just the upper hemisphere of the ellipsoid. Okay. All right, so there's the picture. Um, yeah. Okay, um, one thing I, I guess they're not showing me that I wish they would is evaluating these guys because we're going to need to evaluate them in order to work with. Um, derivatives eventually, and I, I just don't see them going through that. Ah, they don't like you. Um, okay, so we want to be able to evaluate these critters. So um, let me put in a, a, just my own section two here, evaluation. Even in the homework, they do some evaluation problems, so it's not going to kill us. So maybe we can do one of the homework problems. Then. Yeah, so here they are. Um, well, these things kind of look crazy. The first one's pretty simple. So it's just plug and chug. You know, they give you an ordered triple, you plug it into the function. So for example, if you plug in 889 into the square root of x plus y plus c, this is problem two on the right, you would get square root of eight plus eight plus nine. Eight plus eight is 16 plus nine is 25. Square root of 25 is five, okay? Okay, I'm, I'm not worried about whether or not you can do that. It's, it's really not a big deal to me. What I'm worried about is problems like number three. Okay. So um, number three prepares you for what we call a partial derivative. Okay. Um, instead of in one dimensions, you basically just have a, sl a slope and that's it, right? So you have like a tangent line to the curve. In two dimensions, or rather three dimensions, you can have uh, multiple kind of quote unquote slopes. Okay. So let's say um, this plane is cutting through this kind of uh, blob, this Twinkie-like object. Um, if you cut the Twinkie object right here, you, you have a slope like this. You can have a slope like this at this point. But then if you cut the Twinkie object with a plane, I guess, parallel to the y-axis, the, the same um, object, I'm trying to draw the thing. Um, and put, so it's kind of like you have different slopes, right? So in uh, the x direction, you have this slope. In the y direction, you have this other slope. And um, we are, are going to want to explore that in, in the upcoming sections, okay? So to explore that idea, what we're going to develop is kind of like a difference quotient, but um, we have multiple variables, so it looks a little different. And the, the there's two difference quotients. And uh, this problem is, is preparing you for that, okay? Okay, so the first difference quotient is kind of the derivative with respect to x. Okay, so there's gonna be two derivatives, one with respect to x, one with respect to y. This is the one with respect to x, okay? Okay, we want to evaluate this uh, f of x function. So how do I evaluate that? Well, I'm just gonna plug this in for x and plug this in for y. So the y doesn't change, but the, the first part will, right? So plugging x plus change in x in for x, I get four times x plus change in x. And then you just leave y alone, basically, y squared. And then minus um, f of x, y. So minus, just plug in f of x, y. And then divided by change in x, right? So this part right here is this part right here. And then this guy right here is just this guy right here. Okay. okay, we want to do whatever, you know, algebra. Um, 
So this would be 4x plus 4 change in x plus y squared minus 4x minus y squared all over change in x. That will be, um, these guys cancel, these guys cancel, and you get 4 change in x all over change in x, which of course is 4. Okay. Um, then we want to try the other guy. This is like the difference quotient with respect to y. So you see y is being kind of toggled a little bit by this change in y. And then f of x comma y all over change in y. Okay, so again, um, I'm plopping in uh, the uh, sort of material here into my original function. So the first part I'll have 4x and then plus y plus change in y squared and then minus the f of x y function, 4x plus change plus uh, y squared. Okay, and that'll be all over change in y. Okay, all right. So then I'm going to do some algebra. So 4x, and then I have to FOIL. So I get y squared plus 2y change in y's plus change in y squared. And then minus 4x minus y squared. When you think of this change in y, it's one thing, all right? Some people think that that change in y represents two uh, variables or something. It doesn't. It's just one variable. We, we have two symbols for the one variable, okay? All right, downstairs we have the change in y. Um, these cancel. These cancel. I'm left with 2y change in y plus change in y squared all over change in y. Your sort of goal is to get rid of the change in y in the denominator, so I'm going to factor out a change in y from the numerator. Another change in y. And then I, I can remove these guys, and I'm left with 2y plus change in y, and then that's my answer. Okay? Okay, great. Um, is there any of these worth looking at? So, yeah, sure. So describe the domain and range of this function. Let's say number six. So I have g of x, y. So another one of these, right? It equals x square root y. So it's the, the domain is a set of all real numbers, x comma y, such that y needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. As far as the range, though, um, you could let y equal one. So you're sort of on this plane. Um, located at y equals 1. And then you can um, graph out on that plane um, the uh, picture in the xy plane, right? Or the xz plane, rather. So if y is equal to 1, then um, z will be equal to just plain old x. So if I graph that, then in this plane, it's, it's just going to be a straight line like this. And the, the range of that line is all real numbers. So you could say then the range of the entire function is also all real numbers. So negative infinity and two infinity. Okay, so you see how that kind of works. Uh, I'm just gonna look in the zx plane, um, you know, xz plane and graph the thing. And the range of that is the range of the um, multivariable function. So let's, let's try another one of these. Maybe it's not as obvious this time, but number seven, z equals xy all over x minus y. Um, here, again, we need to make sure that x minus y is not zero. In other words, we need to make sure x is not equal to y, okay? So the domain, pretty simple. It's a set of all real numbers, x comma y, such that x does not equal y. And you see that, and I've already marked that in the box. Um, the, the fact that the range is all real numbers may be kind of hard to see, but if you do something like let um, y equal zero, you'll have z equals x all over, or rather just zero. Well, let's not let y, <laughs> let's let y equal one. Maybe that's a better choice. So you get z equals x all over x um, minus one, okay? What the heck is that thing? So you could divide this and kind of, uh, whoops, um, x, yeah, divided by x minus um, 1, it goes to 1 times, so you get x minus 1 minus, and you get 1. So this is equal to 1 um, plus 1 all over x minus 1. 
uh, 1 over x minus 1 will have an asymptote at 1. Okay. And normally it would look like uh, this. Okay. So the, the um, range so far looks like it's everything except 0, right? Uh, but um, if we add 1 to it, what does it do? It shifts it up by 1. So uh, now it'll look like this, and the actual range is all real numbers except uh, z equals 1. Okay? But you can kind of get around z equals 1 by looking at a different trace. So if you can find a trace that hits 1, then it's just going to be all real numbers. So if you let y equal, say, um, I don't know, Maybe, uh, uh, let's say, so I need something to kind of shift it up more, right? So let uh, y equal, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just going to go with 2. Okay? So z equals 2x all over x minus 2. Now let's see if we can pull that off, right? So x minus 2 into um, 2x goes 2 times, so I get 2x minus 4. And then I would get 4. So it's actually 2 plus 4 all over x minus 2. Um, the graph of 4 over x minus 2 has an asymptote at 1, 2. And then if you shift it up by 2, you get a horizontal asymptote at 2. And the graph looks like this. So in this case, the range, so in the first case, the range was everything except uh, uh, one. In this case, the range is everything except uh, two. So, so at least in this uh, trace, you'll hit everything except one. In this trace, though, you're going to hit you're going to hit one anyways. So between this trace and this trace, you see you hit everything. So the actual range is going to be all real numbers. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing that, then uh, that we need to worry about is, is kind of just, uh, okay, how, how do we um, kind of get an idea of the picture? And, and one way to get an idea of the picture is just through level curves. And you see level curves done, if you ever look at like uh, weather maps and stuff like that, or mountains, maps of mountains, you see here on the right, these things, these are what we want to do. And what, what they kind of do is just represent... Um, setting the multivariable function equal to some constant and then drawing that in the xy plane, and et cetera, et cetera. Repeat, wash, repeat, right? So, so let me uh, show you that. Um, so this is section three. Uh, it's called, they call them level curves, um, contour lines, and contour maps. Um, honestly, I never use these. Um, after this uh, ex exploration, I'll probably never talk about them again, but it's in the book and it's in the homework, so we want to show them to you just in case someday you have to go out there. Thankfully, this, this uh, cock, cock plot will actually do the level curves. Um, let's, let's see what the book has, though, right? Um, example three here, they want you to sketch the contour map of f of xy equals the square root of 64 minus x squared minus y squared. So basically what you're doing is cutting it into a bunch of traces and then drawing all the traces in the xy plane. So um, if you see the example 3 on the right here, they want all the level curves going from 0 to 8. And uh, how do I get those? Well, you're just plugging in eight, uh, or the c values, like c equals 0, for the f of xy. Okay, so you're going to plug 0 in on that left part there, and then you have the square root of 64 minus x squared minus y squared, um, and then graph that. You can square both sides, you get 0 is 64 minus x squared minus y squared. So x squared minus y squared equals 64. So you go to your um, xy plane, and um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Six, seven, eight, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Draw the circle, and there is our first contour line, or our first level curve. And usually they label it or c equals zero. 
Um, go to C. Let's let's not do them all. Clearly, let's just go to C equals four. So you have four equals the square root of 64 minus x squared minus y squared. Square both sides. 16 equals uh, now 64 minus x squared minus y squared. Move the stuff to the other side. X squared plus y squared equals. It's embarrassing. I have to do this. 14, 8, 48. Um, so now that the, you know, whatever the heck the square root of 48 is, it's like a little less than 7, right? Um, I know, guys. But, uh, your teacher isn't all that great at arithmetic, so let's get the actual number, 6.9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.9-ish is about right here. Hopefully I got that right. So this is C equals, what do we say, 4? And you just keep on that way. Um, let's see uh, Cock Plot do it. And I'll, uh, is this a, this is a multivariable function. Okay, so I'm going to clear this out. And now, oh, 64 minus x. Squared minus y squared. Um, let me pop that. And then I want the contour map. Okay. All right, so I need to see, I need to change my C values. Um, no. And I, I don't have enough room. I need to get my plot a little bigger. Right. First of all, I'll use zero. Maybe I'll change it. Oh, all right. So let's uh, change these. Well, actually, I'm, how far did I go out? Did I go out to eight or something? Come out here and change all this junk. Sort of did it. Only contour. Oh, it's, I got to redo the contour now. There's nine of them. Keeps going back or hurting it. Sorry, sorry, I totally apologize. There we go. Um, I have no idea what it was trying to do to me, but there, there's the contour plot and all its glory. Um, the hallmark as you go through and it asks for contour plots, um, hopefully, it's kind of obvious what the answer is. At least it was for me. I just guessed my way through it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to have. So basically, what you're doing is just cutting it with a bunch of horizontal planes and kind of looking at the the resulting traces, and then you project all those traces onto the x y plane and see what you get. Um, clearly, this guy should be probably some sort of parabola or sorry, or hyperbolas. So yeah, hyperbola. It's not going to be circles. Um, this guy is a bunch of circles. Um, yeah, and then this one. Clearly, it's a bunch of lines, right? X plus Y equals Z. Uh, if you place Z with C, you just get a bunch of lines in the X, Y plane. Okay, so hopefully that'll get you through it. Um, as usual, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.